Martin G. Daly, Senior Counsel, is a law graduate of the London School of Economics and Political Science, LSE, and an Uthwat awardee of the Honorable Society of Gray's Inn, where he was admitted to practice on November the 22nd, 1967. He was until very recently the senior partner of the firm M.G. Daly and Partners. He is now partner emeritus. He was appointed as senior counsel of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago at the youngest age to date at which appointments have been made in the Caribbean. He has also served as a temporary judge of the High Court of Trinidad and Tobago, a law lecturer, tutor, and sits as an arbitrator. Mr. Daly has been Mr. Daly has earned public respect in a range of other fields, most prominently as a weekly newspaper columnist and writer, former independent senator, a company director experienced in corporate governance, former commissioner of the Regional Judicial and Legal Service Commission. He is a lifelong supporter of the performing arts a Trinidad All-Stars sailor and occasional theater stage performer. He has followed Pan since he jumped in a steel band in Last Lap, playing Lord Melody's Iceman when he was in teens. And of course, you know, only one or two of us know about Lord Melody's Iceman, Lauren. <laughs> I wouldn't say how long ago that was. So, uh, join me in, in uh, welcoming Mr. Martin Daly today <laughs> to give us our feature address, I should add. Good afternoon, all. Of course, I must recognize our formidable president of Pan Trinbago, Mrs. Beverly Ramsey Moore. I made a joke with her earlier this evening. We pointed fingers at each other, and there was a reason for that which is engraved in ink, and I congratulated her for getting here today after what must have been an interesting night in Tobago. But such is the unity of our country and our stability on big occasions that Ms. Ramsey Moore is here from Tobago in Trinidad today as we move from general election to World Steam Pal Day, as they like to say, seamlessly, and that tells you a lot about our country. So, may I begin by saying to you that there is no honor that is greater to me than an act of appreciation received from Pan Trinbago. I've decided not to mention one or two of my exploits inside, outside, and following steel bands in view of the international audience. I am content to say, so I'm leaving out that paragraph because I hate reading anyway. I'm content to say with the presence of Miss Denise as I know her here, if you have any doubts about my street cred, please consult Miss Denise. She, she'll be able to um, tell you things she's observed from high up on a truck and other places. But I have been deeply touched to receive this invitation. And what I, I, as I say, I don't like prepared scripts, but I was asked to make one. And I thought of another way of expressing my pleasure at being here today. For me, to be on the same program as Ray Hallman and Bobby Mohammed is just amazing. Absolutely amazing. Now, one of the reasons why I may have departed somewhat from type or profile has to do with my single parent, Mother Celia. She was, among other things, a Kitchener diehard. And I used to get her mad by telling her Sparrow was a better singer than Kitchener, and she didn't like that at all. Now, one of the things she did, which you would probably recognize in me, and I forgot to give my usual apology for being blunt, one of the things that you would probably recognize in me is my mother Celia didn't like people to be pompous. And she hated people who used $40 words. One of the ways she would make fun of people who, made who used $40 words 
was to make some up herself. Now, had she been with us today, and I had told her that I was coming here to be featured speaker, and I, on top of that, mentioned Bobby Muhammad, she would have looked at me and she would have said, Boy, you register your cognomen, cognomen with Pantry and Bego. That is cognomen registration. That's what she would have said. And that's just a little personal anecdote to emphasize how pleased I am to be here today. Now, I mentioned in passing my bluntness, and I must tell you that pan on the move is a difficult subject. And it's a difficult subject because pan on the move, and you heard it played by Ray Holman, is supposed to tell us that we are moving along happily to better things, to higher planes, or as they like to say in the jargon essays, the next level. Well, it's sometimes debatable whether, and may I say we, whether we are always on the move. So where is Pan today? Is it really on the move? With great respect, it's arguable that it's moved away, at least to the extent that we have conceded part, I emphasize part, we have conceded part of the field in Pan building and Pan tuning to persons outside of Trinidad and Tobago whose marketing skills sometimes exceed ours. Please note that I have not yet referenced pan manufacturing, which I make so bold as to say, has hardly moved anywhere despite the considerable efforts of our friends in the vicinity of Dorata Street, Lavender. I nearly said I have been advised, but that is a phrase that is um, associated with people not so successful in politics. But I did do my research, and I am advised, that the process of converting a drum used for commercial purposes, a drum or container used for commercial purposes, is a complicated one with toxic dangers. That is pan building and pan tuning, in which we have a small but extremely precious cadre of top experienced pan tuners. This is a small and extremely valuable cadre of artisans. Pan manufacturing in a factory, I think you will all agree, is an entirely different enterprise. I respectfully suggest that for pan to make the move into pan manufacturing requires a significantly funded research and development project and particularly for those of you listening abroad with access to hard currency, please listen carefully, more than usually carefully, to what I will be saying about a research and development project. A key part of the research and development project, in the case of pan shooting, pan building, and pan manufacturing, will be human resource component. The main purpose of this research and development project is to establish quality standards for the production of pans through pan manufacturing. Because of necessity, we'll be moving from the artisan basis of pan building and pan tuning to a more mass-produced product for which standards will be very important. And that product, for it to be valuable in the world market, has to be branded as a product of Trinidad and Tobago. So what the management of hum the human resource component in this research and development project will do is manage the pan tuners, but manage only to this extent. If they are to assist us in establishing pan manufacturing to a reasonable standard, they will have to be engaged on a retainer basis. And the retainer arrangements must not compromise their normal arrangements with the bands that hire them. It must also not stimulate any fear that what they pass on to the pan manufacturer will somehow cost them loss of business. So it's very important to understand. We saw in manifestos the usual references to diversification of the economy, pan manufacturing, and so on. This is not something you pick up to make 
a tin to hold pigeon peas. There's not that kind of pan manufacturing. And you'd be surprised how many people don't think there's a lot of difference in a condensed milk tin and a pan. They just don't understand it. We are partly to blame because we never made it understood. And finally, it would be important, of course, in any such arrangement to regulate, to encourage the regulation of middlemen so that products don't hit the market too hastily. Now, there's a reason why I've commenced my remarks by reference to this vital business of pan tuning. Because pan has been on the move internationally for many decades. That we are certain about. But the advance of pan and the move towards a wider, and this is important, more reverential audience. Because we do have the reverence of persons all over the world. Depends on the quality of the music that emanates from a pan when it is played. So that quality sound, I'm suggesting with respect, is a fundamental part of pan on the move. It's a fundamental underpinning of pan being on the move. As many of you will know, in my weekly column in the Express, I frequently write on pan and culture. It's a double pleasure in view of writing this without completely understanding Bobby Muhammad would be with us. I have advocated recognition for the pioneers of PAN and those who have been engaged continuously in building and improving the instrument. I've insisted that we refer to them as scientists and I am dead serious that they are scientists. I said this in a column once entitled Equal to Pythagoras and you will see why I refer to Pythagoras. It's not actually a $40 word, it's someone's name. <laughs> and what I said then, and I would like to read this so I get the quotation accurate. And may I say in passing, all of this came to me because I had a friend who sat near to me when I was in Independent Senate who was a classical music lover, and he, he didn't rate Pan at all. He heard Jit Samaru's family side play at an event at my home under the mango tree. And he came to me and he said, Martin, this is what you've been telling me about. It, it made that kind of impression on him again because he didn't really know what was involved. And he was the one who put me on to these matters to which I'm going, about which I'm going to quote. It is important to appreciate that the invention of the pan as the instrument of what we grew up calling steel band was a scientific invention. Its development required the application of science to the steel drum. In fact, more than one domain of science is involved. The scientific domains of metallurgy and acoustics are two of those domains. Pythagoras, the ancient Greek philosopher, whose theorem tormented those of us who had to do geometry in school, studied the harmonic, harmonic tone of vibrating string in the 6th century before Christ. And he observed as he did this that the tones varied according to the lengths of the string. So you know where I'm going with this. Now, Our pine pioneers, no differently, observed and experimented with and developed the sound and vibrations of the oil drum. That involved the science of acoustics and still does so, particularly in the skill of pan tuning. As to the science of metallurgy, it is, among other things, a study of the physical properties of metals and alloys such as the steel of the oil drum. The science is applied to the surface treatment and heat treatment of the metal and to its practical use as a musical instrument. If we do not take steps to encourage the maintenance of the science and have a succession plan for pan tuners and our other scientists, pan will not remain on the move and will not realize its full potential and respect as a musical enterprise. I'm sorry to start with what might seem to be a mildly negative note, but it is not.
because it starts on the basis of recognizing the real height at which our pan pioneers operated and the real heights at which pan tuners and pan builders currently operate. So not negative at all. But of course, it is important that we preserve and have a succession plan for what we have. I say, therefore, it is vital that the celebration of International Steel Pan Day is infused with the recognition of the work of our pan scientists. But this recognition hangs in the balance without, as I've indicated, a succession plan in respect of pan tuners and a viable plan for pan manufacturing for export. We may not be far away from a pan tuning crisis if we don't examine this aspect of pan on the move with some urgency. By contrast, of course, we are less likely to run out of pan composers and pan musicians. But for Trinidad and Tobago to remain on, on the move, pan on the move as leader in pan music, the composition and playing of pan music must be put on an economical, sustainable footing. Ad hoc and partisan political dependent funding keeps us back. I have absolutely no doubt of that. I have very definite ideas about appro the appropriate funding model that involves emphasis on performance and achievement and less on dependency, but I don't want to strike a controversial note. May I just say that there's not sufficient time today to explain my funding model, which basically falls into two categories. Seed money, if you are starting out something, and subvention when you succeed. Those would be my two principal aspects of my funding plan. And I'm going to some trouble, perhaps, to touch on these dry subjects, particularly in view of, because, in fact, we have an international audience, and people need to understand that what we do here is a lot more than the raw pleasure we get by Green Corner on a juve morning. That's just the output of incredibly hard, and I insist, scientific work. But what I want to do today is to spend some time examining the fallacy that Pan on the Move is primarily about the employment of musicians, and that inclusive of Panorama, employment creation is the only reason for the state and the private sector to invest in Pan. I've heard it said quite recently in the course of this camp, recently concluded campaign, well, the money you invest in, I'm putting it politely, the money in, you invest in PAN is constrained by the fact that if you invest a lot of money in PAN, only 1% of the players and composers will gain um, sustainable employment. Well, of course, we can dispute that figure because we only have to go back to what we heard about Bobby Mohammed and Hugh Board's CVs to know that there, people like that have been gaining sustainable employment since Adam was a boy. Actually, I meant to tell you something about Bobby Mohammed just to lighten the mood a little bit, which I forgot. Unfortunately, in the years in which Bobby Mohammed was king in Panorama, those were the years I was studying in England. But I heard about Bobby Mohammed in the first Panorama I attended subsequent to returning. I'm not going into the panoramas I attended before. And the first thing I heard about Bobby Mohammed is a band came on stage, apparently with a distinctive rhythm, and everybody in the savannah was saying, South Band, South Band, South Band. And I went, well, what is this South Band, South Band, South Band business? And apparently, Bobby Mohammed's style was associated almost exclusively with the South. So you could tell what was a South Band. I had to be educated because I was away at the time of his triumphs. But all of that tells you what is involved. That someone like that, person on the program today, and people like Ray Holman, what was involved. May I just say about Ray Holman, just so he won't feel jealous because we know each other well. But may I just say what was important about Ray Holman composing his own tune. That shouldn't have been controversial at all. Because... I think it was two years after Iceman, but Melody's Iceman, that I was taken as a relatively little fellow, I mean I was in my teens, 
to Queen's Hall for the finals of Pan within the music festival, which had been insisted upon by people that I knew, but I won't trouble you with that. And I remember like yesterday, Pan, I, Pan sorry, the playing on Pan of Inner Monastery Garden. And that also goes back that far. So we have been accomplished at this for the longest time, but the things we need to move and to move forward, I'm trying to identify some of them today and to set right some of the fallacies about why we need to be conservative about investment in PAN. Now, if time permits, I'll return, because I didn't check the time when I started, I'll return to one or two of the things that I've experienced myself when audiences, one audience of which I was a part was 2.5 million people. And that was when Renegades played in Paris, France at the invitation of Jean-Michel Jarre, who was putting on a celebration of Jacques Cousteau. Jacques Cousteau's vessel was called Calypso, as they say it in French. And for that reason, Jarre decided he wanted something to do with Calypso. And Renegades com commanded the entire second half of that program. They had some other musicians in the first half. And how the 2.5 million people was done is from La Défense. I don't know my points of compass in, in Paris. La Défense, which was some distance in terms of miles from the Arc de Triomphe. That entire avenue was closed. And there was place to sit and stand. La Défense... The skyscrapers of La Défense was the backdrop for the pan, on which they put pictures of Cousteau and so on. And there were 2.5 million people on that stretch of road from La Défense. Now, this is the point. That is how we get employment opportunities. That is how we make pan earn money. It's not just about what we get by way of domestic audiences. And each appearance like that is worth a ton load, let me choose my language very carefully, of advertisements, glossy advertisements about beaches and coconut vendors and so on. That, that kind of appearance. Because people say, well, where can I see that? Or where can I go to hear this? Where can I hear it in its native environment? But I'm going to go way over time because I'm, um, I'm, I'm, I'm one of my favorite hobby horses. So what I would like to do is focus on this. The investment in PAN is essential because PAN is a form of social engineering. And every one of you in this room, from the youngest, the two young ladies who played the PAN, to the older ones among us, will know exactly what I mean. The PAN yard has a life of its own. And for PAN to be on the move permanently, day in, day out, we must make an investment in the social engineering aspect of PAN, that is to say the PAN yard. I feel embarrassed in an audience of this distinction to remind everyone, but to let those who are not fully aware of it, that in the well-organized PAN yards, we have homework, apart from the music, we have homework centers, counseling, and pursuits that take care of the anxieties of unloved and alienated children. We constantly complain, to my dismay, since I'm a single parent, single mother child, that our children don't interact with men and male models. Well, that also takes place, properly supervised, of course, with males. So that fulfills that need as well. And I have been very, very strong on the fact that the investment in PAN is not only in the music. It is about what the PAN does sociologically or in terms of socioeconomic assistance to areas and parts of Trinidad and Tobago that where the social conditions are not the best. Let me just pause here and say I'm not suggesting that PAN has not long escaped its humble origins in terms of its projection abroad. I'm not suggesting that at all. In fact, as you know, there were many people in the era of you, Bird, and um, Bobby Mohammed, so-called white boys. Some of them live right here in Scottbush Street. Dixieland have an association with Scottbush Street right there, 
who were involved with this were the start, and Pan has cut through every strata of society. Sadly, though, we don't understand the social engineering aspect of Panyard life, and so we've not understood that we must invest money in Pan in order to capture that. Let me just say in passing, because I'll have my critics for my way that I approach things. I, of course, understand that in the technology world, social engineering is now an unpleasant thing. It refers to using technological devices to manipulate people. So let's think instead, but social engineering was a, a term long before that happened. Let's just think in terms of behavioral change models. And may I be so bold, Madam President, to say that if they revive this committee about um, how to approach these errors that are protesting because of conditions, Pantry and Bego must insist, insist on appearing before that committee and pursuing some of these ideas. And I can't think of anybody better to do it than yourself. Because, well, that's kind, very kind of you, but the, I wouldn't last more than two, two sessions because there would be, you know, the talk would be too long for things that are obvious to you and I. But it's really important that you get in there. Of course, sport is another avenue to do this, the kind of socioeconomic changes that I would like. But I can't speak to sport. I've had to represent people who have been victimized in sports. I, I'm not too keen on hearing about sport. I know what the pan is worth. I know whatever squabbles we've had. There's been a panorama. Whatever squabbles we've had, you have flown from Tobago to Trinidad today. And that is one of the strengths of pan Trinbago. It don't mash up. It's get bad talk, stamped upon, discouraged, but it don't mash up. So returning briefly to my prepared script. Um, you'll tell me when to stop, please. I need to tell you that I've attended the Brooklyn Panorama on two occasions and been around the pan yards there. It was, of course, a very interesting experience. But you know what grieved me? When I got to the pan yard of Sonatas, of which Johan Popplewell was then the arranger and tutor, he looked up and he was surprised to see me. If I can make a joke about myself, people sometimes surprised to see me in a pan yard. I don't know. Profiling cuts a lot of different ways, but never mind. Miss Denise knows what I'm talking about. So Popperwell looked at me and he recovered himself. He's a guy who had played at my home once. And he said, boy, you travel far. And I discovered, what grieved me was I discovered that within, the, within Brooklyn at least, at-risk children, these are the children who have to go home with the latch key. If they join a pan side and become reasonably proficient, they get credits in the school for doing that. Now, I don't know that we do that here, but the point about it is a form of encouragement. It's not just going to learn this pan against their will. It, it is incentivized by the giving of credits. <clears throat> so no doubt you will tell Mr. Watkins committee or remind him, you know all of this already. So they're not coming to reinvent the wheel as far as what PAN can do. And that is why I've chosen some of these topics. So I would just like to emphasize that I have urged successive governments to examine the significant potential of the performing arts, not only in terms of its potential as a labor-intensive business, but also as a means of turning around violent crime among youth. I had the pleasure once of interacting from someone from a garrison community in Jamaica who used theater for exactly the same purpose. And she told me, and I have no reason to disbelieve her, in fact, I looked at some of it on the internet, that as you know, garrison communities have invisible lines. And she was able to form a theater group where the people who join the invisible lines were not unhappy, let us put it like that, the children crossed those lines in order to join the theater group to emancipate themselves, really. And so that is another thing that people need to understand. And that is one of the things that all of these socioeconomic benefits, I call it a peace dividend. I, I think that our rulers underestimate the peace dividend that can come from Pan. Now, 
I just like to say that in relation to the cliche about teaching a person to fish, I say in the loudest possible but polite tones, we already have the fish, the output of the musicians and the tuners and everything that goes on in the pan world is the fish. We catch the fish and have it already. We just need help and wise investment to make that pay money and peace dividend for Trinidad and Tobago. And I'm sorry if this is a I'm sorry if this is a, a, a heavy subject. Now happily I've got to the part that says finally because Mr. Gittins did me a wickedness. I heard him say to Fazir Muhammad that I am being brought here to clarify, that's the word he used, the position of Pan as a result of the declaration of Pan as the national instrument of Trinidad and Tobago. Well, I used to be obedient sometimes. So if he tell me to clarify it, I ought to try and clarify it. Well, the simple answer is, that there is no legal position because all we have is a bare declaration made in Independence Day 1992 that Pan is the national instrument of Trinidad and Tobago. The way that has to be dealt with, in my respectful view, is that we could start by looking at the legislation that governs national emblems. We have protected by legislation our coat of arms and, and those sorts of things. We have said in that legislation that we are copywriting these emblems to the state. Well, I need hardly tell you that the copyright ship has sailed a long time ago, and that's a very complicated subject. But there are other important things in there which have to do with the licensing of the use of the national emblems as a symbol. And so clearly one of the things that can be done in relation to the national instrument to give it some kind of force of law is to see to it that someone cannot use a pan as a logo on anything without a license. Well, I'd prefer from Pan Trinbago because I'm not too trustful of governments, but no, never mind. That is important. And if I may strike another personal note, you will have seen countless letters from John Henry Pitty Valley about the absolute vodka pan. And he said, he found out somehow I was doing this, and he said, make sure you talk about that. Well, I'm only talking about that because, of course, it's an example of an advertiser using a pan, and I don't know what are the commercial arrangements. But more importantly, I don't know what pan Trinbago or pan people get out of the use of pan for advertising like that. Of course, legislation can't have extraterritorial effect. That is to say, it can't operate outside of Trinidad and Tobago, but at least we can make a start here. So I hope, Mr. Gittins, that... I've earned my bun and sweet drink by um, clarifying what is the legal position. In fact, there isn't one. So really what I'm saying is that I'm delighted with where Pan is. I am not a skeptic about where Pan reached. Pan reached very far. But there are critical things that we have to see to, A, to keep it as our own, and B, to take it where I would like in terms of revenue, and socio-economic problems. And I'm sure I've made that absolutely plain. So that when they're talking about a diversified economy, they have to understand what that means. It just doesn't mean throwing some money at a particular event. So what, all I can say is, I hope that I have given you some food for thought about Pan on the Move. I've tried to tie my remarks closely to the concept of Pan on the Move how it is moving away, where it can move to, and the things we need to do to make it move smoothly. I'd like to congratulate the organizers for this event. I'm sure it will go from strength to strength. We have an uncertain future at the moment in terms of the pandemic. But thank you again from the bottom of my heart for the invitation to speak to you today. I have registered my cognomen. Thank you very much.